Well, hello there everyone, and welcome to the start of a brand new herping vlog episode in 2024. It is the second half of May, and I'm in a part of the country that I have spent very little time in this year, and that is the northeastern United States, specifically New England. This time of year in the second half of May and late spring is honestly a great time of the year to herp. Uh, reptiles especially are becoming really active as they're entering nesting season. And I'm going to be up here for a little bit, so hopefully I'll be able to get out a few times and find some herps and whatever I find, I will show it to you. Okay, everyone, so my first herp in New England in 2024 is this little American toad. You can tell it's an American toad because they only have one to two warts on these large dark spots on their backs. I've been seeing a lot of Fowler's toads this year, which we do have in New England, but they're a little rarer. I literally found this toad right next to our shed. So I'm just going to put him back underneath. Nope, oh, maybe he doesn't want to go back under there. I'm sure if we just coax him a little bit, there we go. So, nice little backyard American toad. Technically, this is my second snake in New England because literally right over here I saw a garter snake. But then I got this snake, which to me is a lot cooler. This is a Decay's brown snake or a northern brown snake. And I found one recently in Georgia, but this is the first one I've seen in New England in more than four years. And this is a huge one. They really only get to about a foot long and they're extremely docile snakes that mostly eat snails and other invertebrates. And they actually in captivity do really well on earthworms, but it's really cool. Like I said, this is the first one I've seen in New England in about four years. So it's a pretty significant find and had to get it in hand as a result. So beautiful decays or northern brown snake. All right, so I'm just gonna let the brown snake go back where I was heading. And there it goes. Now it's stopped there for a second, but he's just going to head off in this direction to the woods, so we'll just let him be. So we're walking along the edge of this field right here, and I actually haven't been able to get any of these on film, but we've been hearing several snakes coming out of the vegetation on the edge of the trail. Specifically, we were hearing from them on that side because the sun was really beating down over there, probably at least three or four. I'm assuming these are probably all going to be garter snakes. Um, so I haven't gotten a garter snake on film yet, but we've seen at least a few of them. But we're going to keep walking now. Maybe we can see another snake on film. But just absolutely beautiful scenery, perfect temperature, and plenty of songbirds to keep me entertained. That turtle right over there, people. Oh, just dipped in the water. First spotted turtle of the day. Yeah, so there's a, those look like male spotted turtles. Act. One, because the males have like gray on their faces. Um, the one on the right's definitely a male, and I don't know about the one on the left. But yeah, there are two right there. I don't know who. Got another spotted turtle right here. That's what, four spotted turtles today? This looks like it's a male. Big tail, gray face, so it's really cool. It is literally, oh. All right, we got Will here attempting to grab a snapping turtle. And he got it. There he is. That's actually a good size snapper. Ah, a little snapper. 
Hey, it's a baby compared to the one yesterday. Yeah, it was. Ooh hoo, common snapping turtle. What's your problem, boy? Right, got this common snapping turtle here. You can probably tell it's a boy. Um, largest freshwater turtle that we have here in New England. The record for, for this species is actually an 80 pound individual that was found here in New England. Got pulled out of a pond and sent up to a zoo where it unfortunately died a couple weeks later. This is a smaller one, I'd say it's about what, 10, 15 pounds maybe. Honestly, with the smaller ones, they're a little harder to handle because there's not as much sh shell space down here where I'm holding it, so he can easily just like cut up my arms with his big claws here. But this is, um, like I said, these are just really cool turtles. They have this, like, look at the tail on that um, right here. You can see like these little spikes coming out of it. But yeah, they get, they're really defensive like this because um, they can't tuck their limbs into their shell, so they just have this attitude right here. Really cool common savvy turtle. They smell horrible. They love to eat dead things. And I think we're just going to let this guy go. You guys good? All right. Set. Let's send him down. Send him down yonder this way. And there he goes. Right back into the water. One thing I hate is even when no. so see you see that. Oh my so word, that is a small it? little thing. This little tiny frog right here is a pickerel frog. In the southeastern United States, these frogs are a little hard to find, but here in New England, they're much more common, and the leopard frogs are a lot rarer. So we can tell it's a pickerel frog because the underside has that ye yellow legs. You can kind of see that right there. Leopard frogs don't have that, and they more... Hold on. The pattern, it doesn't... Those spots are more leopard-shaped. They're more just like... I don't know, more squares than they are circles. So pretty calm. I would say one of the more common frogs we have here in New England. Nice little pickerel frog. All right, so people right here, this is a northern water snake just basking on the side of the stone wall here. Um, now you might just think, ah, oh, it's just a Nerodia, right? They're pretty common. Well, here in New England, this is the only species of water snake you can find. And while I will say they are common, um, they can be a little hard to find too at the same time. This guy just is sunning itself here, and this is my third species of snake I've seen since I've been back. So, classic common northern water snake. So here's our second water snake of the day. So pretty cool. This one started off pretty aggressive, um, started off a little defensive as they normally do, but it's starting to calm down a little bit. But classic northern water snake. So right here, we got at least three water snakes. This, we got a younger, a smaller one there that's like a male. And that's potentially two females that are right there. So it's likely these snakes are all courting each other. That's at least five water snakes that we've seen in like five minutes here. So that's really cool. And like I said, northern water snakes are the only Nerodia that we have. So up here, I think people appreciate Nerodia a little more than they do in places where we have like several other species. So we got another Nerodia that's right there. We got a couple more that are right here. So that's really cool. 
So yeah, you can see the eye on this one here. Looks a little gnarly. That's like a, either a really bad shed that went wrong or just something happened to the eye. But here's a better shot. We get a couple water snakes right here. There was another one. The smaller ones, that's 10 Nerodia that we've seen in this one spot, which is really cool. And as you can see, right adjacent to some wetland right here. So that's awesome. See, hello, Mr. Nerodia. Where is this 11 of the day or something crazy like that? Got my first common garter snake in hand. We've seen already a few already. This is the first one I was able to actually get on film and catch. Most common snake we have up here in New England. Pretty much the most common snake you'll find anywhere, but this is really the true, well, the only true common snake we have in this part of the country. So I'm gonna let him go here in the grass. And he's gone. Hey people, we've been here for literally like two minutes and we got a monster, monster smooth green snake. This is, I think, the fourth one I've ever seen. But we literally found this snake out on the crawl. We were actually flipping rocks here and we got one so quickly. Um, obviously, the di big difference between these and the rough green snakes are the, uh, you can see there, the smooth scales versus the keeled. But this is a really big individual for a smooth green snake. So that's really awesome. Let's see if we can find some more. All right, we just got our second smooth green of the day. This one's a little in shed. My phone is not focusing whatsoever on this guy. There we go. So yeah, there's smooth green number, the second one, and here's the first one. So that is a side-by-side -side or a comparison of both of these snakes. Unbelievable. Oh, decays brown. I lost, I lost it though. Just like so freaking look look at this all right so before today i'd only seen three smooth greens my whole life we have three today this is the third one of the day it is also kind of in shed too so we have four snakes at this spot so far but that's just unbelievable and he's just spazzing away there we're gonna keep on flipping because at this rate who knows how many more we'll find but Three smooth greens. I'll be getting lit up later, but it's totally worth it. <laughs> oh, decays brown. Nice. Sweet. It? Decays brown. Nice. Oh, that's a. Okay, I'm gonna put the rock back yeah, yeah. Dude. All right, so this is the second decays brown of this spot. Just flipped it under a rock here. Really small one as that distinctive pattern. Ooh, God, phone it. There we go. That distinctive little pattern behind the head here, but really tiny little snake. That's five snakes that we flipped this morning. God knows if we're gonna find any more. I don't think anyone's gonna be under. Yeah, it's ant infested. Maybe shoot. 
Ah, oh, dang it. I don't see anything. All right, we just got a black racer. It is downpouring rain right now, but uh, yeah, so I'm only recording with my GoPro right now, but here's the racer and he's got, is that SFP oh. or what's going on down there? I don't know, but maybe not the healthiest racer, but at least it's a snake. All right, we just flipped two racers under this cover object right here. Oh, that's awesome. Get a load of that. Oh, that is sick. Nothing. Yeah, I think the first milk we got. Nice looking board. Mikey, you ruined it. We got a northern ringneck. This is our fourth snake of the day. They don't really have that dotted pattern on their undersides like the southern ringnecks do, or even northern ringnecks in the southern part of their range. But really cool little tiny fossorial snake. And yeah, pretty cool. All right, we just got a monster racer here. I'm pretty sure we've all seen this individual before. Um, but it is still really cool. That's four racers at this one spot. That's a record for me personally, I think. So, really cool. Nothing. Ah, dry. Oh, it's perfectly dry too. See it. All right, we got probably my main target of the day. First Eastern milk snake in three years for me. Under these the mattress here. Oh my god. Alright, so here's an up close look at this milk snake. I found it underneath this mattress here. Now, Eastern, like I said, this is the first Eastern milk snake I've seen in New England in three years. And this is the only Lampropeltis species of Lampropeltis we have in this region. And they usually have a U or a Y on the back of their heads. This one has a Y. I've seen some that don't even have any patterns on them. They're just doing their own thing, but Really cool, this one's in shed, but they have that typical kind of brown, red body coloration, gray coloration with uh, some orange or red dots. So really awesome, super glad we got this snake and who knows what else we'll find. All right, look at this really good piece cover object here. I don't even know, it's like rubber. Okay, so nothing on this side. How about on this side? Oh God, bunch of ants, but nothing else, just roaches and ants. Well, it's been a slow day herp wise, but here's a little tiny red back salamander. This is the most abundant vertebrate in the forests of New England. And easily the most common salamander we can find. So with this redback, I have now seen every taxonomic group of reptiles and amphibians that are can be found in New England, which is cool. Little tiny redback, I'm gonna let him go under his log right here. I just flipped this huge northern ringneck snake underneath this log here. So yeah, that's really exciting. This is the second ringneck that I've seen during my time in New England. It's actually not the little fossorial snake that I'm targeting today, but I'm happy that I at least got a snake on the board. Beautiful orange belly, and again, completely patternless, patternless on that belly side, so. I can already smell the musk from here, but a really good size ringneck snake. I'll let him go here in a second, but 
redback salamander and a ringneck snake today. Okay, people, this is my target. This is the snake I wanted to see. This is an eastern worm snake, and it's not my lifer, but I'll say this. Um, here in New England, this is probably the rarest snake that we have. It is easily the rarest snake. Um, they are at the absolute northern limit of their range. There's only a handful of locations where worm snakes occur in. And, oh my god, I cannot believe it. It's not my lifer, but this is feels like a lifer because they're so rare. They are so rare where I am right now, or really hard to find. So, unbelievable. This is huge. One of my biggest targets coming up to New England. It's my first ever New England worm snake. Here's another look at the worm snake. And it's up here, they're really dark compared to the ones I've seen in Georgia, and their bellies are really pink. So I can't believe I pulled it off and got this worm snake here in New England. As I said, they only occur at a handful of locations, and they are just really hard to find. So I've been out here literally all day trying to look for them, or I should say all this morning, not all day. I pulled it off, so. I'm gonna pose this guy for some photos really quick and then we'll let it go, but unbelievable find. So that lizard right there is an Italian wall lizard. And in New England, this is an invasive species, or I should say an introduced species. And one thing about New England is we have a very low lizard diversity. We only have one species that's native and it's only in a handful of locations, common five-line skink. But it's cool that we have these lizards here in a very urban environment. Here's another wall lizard that is sunning itself on this little platform here. So that's two so far. Here is another wall lizard. I've seen a few now, but I'm trying to get one in hand, but they're proving to be a little too quick.
All right, everyone, so my goal right now has been to try and catch one of these Italian wall lizards in hand. Um, I have been pretty much unsuccessful in doing that, and fortunately, though, my cameras have kind of helped out in getting up close to these lizards. Um, as I mentioned, these New England doesn't really have a big lizard diversity at all. We only have that one, one native species. So the fact that we can actually go out and find lizards here, I think is pretty cool. And they're not necessarily invasive. They're more or less introduced. They were placed here and the population has thrived. So really all around like these garden plots here, just the perfect microhabitat for the wall lizards. And what's really interesting is that they're actually um, from Italy, as the name suggests, but where they are in Italy is a more of a subtropical climate, but they've managed to use artificial heat sources here to survive the colder winters of New England, which I think is pretty remarkable. Um, it is very interesting that we are surrounded by city all over the place, so the hustling and bustling, and I haven't been really able to monologue out loud because it's kind of weird to have um, see someone talking to themselves, but I'm gonna wrap up here shortly work our way back out and we got got to see several Italian wall lizards today So maybe I can get one in hand, but if not, it's been a pretty good day Well, good evening, everyone. My time in New England is very close to coming to an end, so I've decided to wrap up this herping vlog episode. I've been up in New England for the last two weeks, and overall, I've really enjoyed my time here, especially the herping. And overall, I would say the last couple weeks have been very productive herp-wise, and I think what's made this trip up to New England unique compared to my last several is that I was able to find a few herp species that I haven't seen in a few years in this region, such as the, the Decay's brown snake, eastern milk snake, and the Italian wall lizards. So that was all pretty exciting, but if I would have to pick one find that stood out amongst all the rest, that was without a doubt the eastern worm snake that I found. And it's just because these little tiny fossorial snakes are very common throughout their whole range, but in New England we really don't know much about them, and that's just because they're really hard to find and only occur in a few known locations. So the fact that I was finally able to get one was just awesome in every way. But honestly, I really couldn't ask for a better trip up here. I mean, the weather has been nothing short of perfect. Temperature-wise, it doesn't get any more comfortable than this. Pretty much every day is like in the low 70s. It's not hot, it's not humid. I'm comfortable in shorts, comfortable in pants, all that stuff. I really could not have asked for a better trip up here. The only thing that kind of did go wrong was reaching in poison ivy bushes for snakes. Uh, didn't really bode too well for me, as you can see focus in on here. I've broken out into a poison ivy rash here and pretty much just all over my arm at this point. Got some right here. This is all calamine lotion that I've put on. It's on my fingers too as well. God, yeah. So it's not my first time developing poison ivy. It certainly won't be my last, unfortunately, or poison wood or any other poison plant related um, reaction. It's not the worst I've had either, but yeah, other than the poison ivy, I really could not have asked for a better time up here. And I am going to start my next adventure very soon, and you will see where I'll be ending up in my next video. 
So thank you so much to everyone who checked this one out. I will see you in the next video as I begin my new adventure.